Hello, hello, my friends. Welcome to the second episode of A-Level Economics. If you like this video, feel free to like it and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can check out the full course on our Patreon page. New episodes come out every week. Let's talk about the allocation of resources. In a market economy, all economic agents are assumed to be rational, which means they'll make the decisions that are best for themselves. Huh, how about that? Turns out I'm not selfish, just rational. These decisions will be based on economic incentives, such as making profits or paying as little as possible for a product. Considering people's incentives helps to understand fundamental questions such as what to produce, how to produce it, and who to produce it for. Markets are a way of allocating resources. They don't have to be a place or involve the exchange of physical objects. Each buyer or seller in the market choose to exchange something they have for something they'd prefer to have instead. For example, someone's labor, their work, is a resource. If they have a job, they exchange their labor for a salary. Since everyone is considered to be rational in a free market, an economist would assume that the worker would prefer to have higher wages but fewer working hours, and the employer would prefer to pay less money and to know that there's someone there to do good work. Exchanging things in this way results in a particular allocation of resources. A free market allocates resources based on supply and demand, and also the price mechanism. In other words, everything is for sale except your dignity, since anything can be sold at any price that people will pay for it. Free market economies have a number of advantages, but, as with everything in life, there are also some downsides. Unless you're talking about watching this video. No downside here, right? At least you hope not. In a planned economy, it's the government, not the markets, that decides how resources should be allocated. Communist countries have planned economies, but they are much rarer since the collapse of communism in the late 20th century. However, some countries still have planned economies, such as North Korea. Pros of free market economy 1. Efficiency as any product can be bought and sold, only those of the best value will be in demand. So, firms have an incentive to try to make goods as efficiently as possible. 2. Entrepreneurship In a market economy, the rewards for good ideas can make entrepreneurs a lot of money. Just look at Richard Branson. This encourages risk-taking and innovation. 3. Choice the incentives for innovation can lead to an increase in choice for consumers. Cons of a free market economy 1. Inequalities Market economies can lead to huge differences in income. This can be controversial, since many people think large differences are unfair. And in a completely free market, anyone who is unable to work, even if it's not their fault, would receive no income. Two. Non-profitable goods may not be made. For example, drugs to treat rare medical conditions may never sell enough for a firm to make any profit. So, these would not be made. There is no financial incentive. 3. Monopolies. Not the board game, but the abusive market dominance. Successful businesses can become the only supplier of a product. Let us now walk through the pros and cons of a planned economy. Pros of a planned economy. 1. Maximize welfare. Governments have more control over the economy, so they can prevent inequality and redistribute income fairly. They can also ensure the production of goods that people need and are beneficial to society. 2. Low unemployment. The governments can try to provide everyone with a job and a salary. 3. Prevent monopolies. The market dominance of monopolies can be prevented by the government. Cons of a planned economy 1. Poor decision-making A lack of information means that governments may make poor and slow decisions about what needs to be produced. 2. Restricted choice Consumers have a limited choice in what they can consume and firms will make what they're told to make. 3. Lack of risk-taking and efficiency Government-owned firms have no incentive to increase efficiency, take risks, or innovate, because they don't need to make profit. 
A market failure happens when free markets result in undesirable outcomes. For example, traffic congestion is seen as a market failure. Governments often intervene when there's a market failure. They might change the law or offer tax breaks or create some other kind of incentive to try to influence people's behavior. Governments can also intervene in the economy by buying or providing goods or services. When both the government and markets play a part in allocating resources, this is called a mixed economy. Let's wrap this episode by stating the difference between productive and allocative efficiency. Productive efficiency is concerned with the optimal method of producing goods, producing goods at the lowest cost. It means that, given the available inputs and technology, it is impossible to produce more of one good without decreasing the quantity of another good that's produced. Now, allocative efficiency is concerned with the optimal distribution of goods and services. It means that the particular mix of goods a society produces represents the combination that society most desires. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Also, check out our Instagram to be up to date with the new courses and episodes. Bye!